Peace. What the deal is. I know y'all be expecting me to be on some CP time shit. You're like, he said one o'clock. He's not going to really come at one. It's going to be like one fifteen, Maybe even one thirty. No, motherfuckers. Eyes here. Click that like button. As soon as you come in this piece. If you were here with us yesterday, I was having some microphone problems. As you can see today, we're using a different microphone. Hopefully everybody can hear me loud and clear. If you can, go ahead and state that in the comments, just so I know. My brother in the uh, in the waiting room, can you hear me clearly? Just, just I can't hear you right now. Just give me a thumbs up. I can see you. Okay, good, 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 good. Good. What's up, family? What's up, family? Grand afternoon, Kimmy. Be one to you. Peace to the gods. Peace to the earth. Come one, come all. Come join us. I know it's one o'clock, but for some of y'all, if you're on the West Coast, you're just waking up, getting your shit on, getting it popping. For you, this is a wake and bake. It's the wake and bake time. We got our brother here. We getting ready to bring him on in a minute. You know, a lot of times I want to introduce y'all to not only people that you know, but people that I feel like I think you should know. People that can help add value to your life and your experience. And this is one of those brothers. Good brother that I met. Uh working on a project a film project called happy that y'all need to check out directed by my brother taki grant but today we got our brother reverend philippe shock matthews minister of the metaphysical science and philosophy minister of metaphysical science and philosophy and the founding minister of First, frequency of oneness, science, manifestation, and prosperity. That's www.firstfrequency.com. The word shock stands for seeking higher omnipotent consciousness or cosmic knowledge. Effectually named by the community as the metaphysical Morpheus, a social entrepreneur and a member of the international metaphysical ministry host of the philippe matthews show dedicated to featuring content on the subjects of disruptive economics digital wealth creation critical race theory social justice anti-racism historical intergenerational trauma african-american mental illness genetic memory epigenetics uh, axiology Comedic science, metaphysics, racial socialization, and healing racialized poverty. Founder of the Shock Metaphysics Virtual Comedic Wisdom School. Um, and he's authored more than 17 Amazon books and seven bestsellers. Professor Kaba Hiawatha uh, Kameen says, Philippe is the Marcus Garvey of our time. Uh... By Hidden Colors, one to five star. And Mark Victor Hansen says, the co-author of Chicken Soup for the Soul, Mark Victor Hansen calls Philippe the Oprah of the Internet. 
Okay, people. Well, with no further ado, we're going to uh, welcome our brother to the Godcast, Reverend Shock, Philippe Matthews. Hotep, God. How are you, my brother? Hotep, my brother. I'm good, man. I'm glad. I'm, I'm, I'm honored to be here, my brother. You were reading that Bible. I was looking around like, who who, who, who are you talking about? Uh, we're talking about I'm you, meet that dude. I want to know who that guy uh, is. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and I want the people to um to meet you as well. Um So yeah, I just gave the people a little bit of your bio. I don't think it's it's um really necessary for you to to to, to now rehash everything we say. Um but they call you the uh metaphysical morpheus. Yes? Ooh, okay, yeah. I I actually came up with a with a nickname for you. You ready? Oh Lord, here we go. Shocktimus Prime. Shocktimus Prime. What? Ooh. Dude, I think that's gonna stick. <laughs> that's gonna stick, man. They got a lot of names. Shocktimus me, man. Prime. Man, I like that. You know, I you could be the metaphysical Morpheus, aka Shocktimus Prime. Shocked him as and you got to say it with that deepness. Shocked him as Shocked prime. Him as prime. Shocked, you get yeah. right. You got to lower yeah. that. You got to put. Yeah, Shocked yeah. You got to go to the lower right register. Now. Shocked him as prime. So, <laughs> oh um, my gosh. So Rev, as I as I um have my morning um wake and bake, just tell us a little bit why they call you the metaphysical Morpheus. It, it, you know, it's, thank you for that, brother. But it came about in a way where uh, the community started making associations with Morpheus unlocking Neo's mind from the matrix. And so they look at me because they know I'm in metaphysics and they say, well, Philippe uh, unlocks uh, black folk from the matrix and from trauma uh, because that's what I specialize in in my ministry is, is trauma, uh, black trauma, historical trauma, generational trauma. Uh, I also, uh, I'm an expert on uh, digital wealth creation. One of the things that we've noticed. Which uh, you've been helping me with. Huh? Which you've been helping me with. Did, yeah. Digital which I've wealth creation. With. And what I've noticed with a, a lot of our family is that it's not that we don't know how to build wealth or sustain wealth. It's that we have so much uh, trauma that inside of us that we don't know it's there and trauma takes over as the personality. Uh, mm. When you are born into trauma, when you are going through trauma and there's four types of trauma that we can talk about in a, in, a, in a moment. But what happens with that trauma is it causes you to procrastinate. It causes you not to be able to see opportunities. It causes you to stay stuck. And the goal of what we call or refer to in our ministry as the AMU or second frequency, which we can get into later on as well, but we're talking about this European concept that we've been under for 500 years. The goal of this, of, of this group uh, is for Africans and African-Americans to basically just grow old and die and never manifest and reach their highest level of potential. So my ministry is in direct opposition of that. And I don't see anybody out there really talking about this aspect of trauma and how it manifests in the body. Uh, and we don't we don't um, we don't pray stuff away. We, we 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 hit it head on and we're not a self-esteem ministry. We're a scientific ministry. And so we don't really preach. We teach. And and so that's what uh, uh, this ministry first frequency of oneness is about what I do in terms of lessons in shock, uh, which is a series uh, that I have uh, produced on 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 YouTube as as well as you know. So that's really what uh, the metaphysical Morpheus means. I'm unlocking people, my people, from this matrix, from these lies that have been installed uh, in us uh, at birth, and if you will, when we talk about epigenetics or genetic memory before birth. All right, let's 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 break it down for somebody that might not even understand the basics sure what is metaphysics <laughs> simply simply metaphysics is the the study of uh as above so below so meta is above physics is below and so it's the study and the science uh of the allness how we manifest 
our creation, how we manifest our reality, uh, how we, how ancient Africans uh, became the first uh, metaphysicians, particularly the Dogon, uh, in in terms of their spiritual practice, in terms of where we come from, and, and our spiritual system of Maat. We're the original metaphysicians. We mastered heaven and earth. We mastered the skies and mapped out the skies. We mapped out the earth, uh, which is the quantum physical realm. And as a result of when you uh, when you uh, take uh, macro physics or astrophysics and you master micro physics, you create a metaphysical journey. And so that's what that's what metaphysics is in terms of my interpretation uh, of it. Copy, copy, copy. Um. So, so we mentioned your name, Shock. Mm -hmm. What did what did we say? Shock stands for. What does Shock mean? Seeking higher omnipotent conscious knowledge. It's a conscious or cosmic knowledge. So, <clears throat> years and years ago, uh, as I was developing this process, um, I made a point and a decision in my life to seek uh, the highest, most omnipotent, highest, purest form of conscious and cosmic knowledge. And so I launched many years ago an um, a, a, a interview process, talk show process. I've done over a thousand interviews with uh, the most brilliant minds in the world. You being one of them, you've been on my, sh on my platform many times. And I have conversations with enlightened people, and that sh that creates a shock in the system. What we've learned is that when we are bombarded uh, repetitively with uh, true knowledge and true wisdom, we we awaken uh, in what we call the consciousness of being woke. And so that's going into shock. Uh, that's seeking every time we uh, listen to or or, or, or read a Dr. Francis Cress Wilson. Every time we watch a Dr. Lena Jeffries or the Hoppy film or uh, Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene. We're going into shock. We're seeking higher omnipotent conscious or cosmic knowledge. And that's really what it means to be um, African and African-American on this on this planet. Now, I've heard you speak, you know, many times and you've you've said Nothing is wrong with black people. Something happened to black people. Facts. What do you mean by that? Facts, facts. So as I look at my own personal life, my own personal journey, uh, and what I have gone through and what I have grown through, um, at one point, um, the, the way this system is designed, uh, it is designed on, false, on a false racial construct. It's designed on this false racial construct of white, uh, and whiteness, which is completely false. It was developed back in 16, uh, uh, 18, uh, 1664 to 1681. White people were invented uh, as a matter of law in this country before the U.S. Constitution was written, before the first meeting of Congress, before the uh, uh, forefathers, quote unquote, were, were even thought about or born hundred, hundreds of uh, years before that. And at that moment, <clears throat> when these psychopathic Europeans uh, decided uh, to create this law, uh, the, the, to create white people and invent white people as a matter of law. Uh, it was called anti-messagination. Uh, and it was a cluster of laws that came down. And in that cluster of law, that was where the Negro, which is a false racial construct for an African, was born. And we've been, uh, when you're born into a false racial construct, you're born into mental illness. You're born mm. into uh, a process where you're trying to figure out and you're trying to fit in, you're trying to go along to get along and you lose yourself over a period of time and you try to you try to articulate what does it mean to be black? What does it mean to be African? Well, in this country, particularly because of whiteness and why it was invented as a matter of law, uh, the African, we're, you know, I always say that we're born gods and goddesses. We're taught how to be Negroes and niggas. You know, we're not thugs, thoughts, bitches, hoes, baby mamas, and baby daddies. It's That's a morning. taught or learned behavior. And mm -hmm. so we are gods, have, we're gods and goddesses having a baby mama, uh, thug, thought, nigga, negro uh, experience. But we're born perfect. We're born perfect, whole, and complete because that's what the creator did. Now, the other thing and the reason why we call this first frequency is because 
when the creator decided to manifest a human form, the first uh, form that it created was African, uh, was the African. It was and is the most durable, venerable, undefeatable uh, force of nature that the creator has ever created. And so we're born as gods and goddesses having <clears throat> this, this metaphysical experience. So when we look at this, this understanding of nothing is wrong with us, uh, it, it, it took me uh, some years to understand what the impact of trauma had on our bodies. What was the impact of whiteness uh, on black bodies that we've had to be born into, that we, our parents and our great grandparents and so on and so forth were born into? What did we have to endure when these anti-miscegenation uh, laws came down in 1681? There were three of uh, three of those laws that came down that literally brought you and I to this conversation today. The first law was a person of African descent could not vote or run for office. The second law was a person of African descent could no longer own a gun or gunpowder. So you could no longer feed your family and you could no longer defend your family. Mm. The third law which is the most insidious, was that a person of African descent could no longer take any type of legal action against this new desi this false designation of humanity called white people. Now we see that manifest today when we get shot by the police and they get off. So we see where this insidious disease, this psychopathic uh, vibration frequency that we call it second frequency, the reason why we call the Amu second frequency is because, hey, you came in second after you came out of the ice. You were no longer African. You were no longer first frequency. And so as a result, you wreaked havoc uh, in the Ma'afa since the time that you, 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 you left the caves. And so when we understand this concept uh, of anti-miscegenation, we understand that at that moment when we could not take any legal action, we, the, the, for the African male, we became boys. We, we were not men uh, anymore. We were boy, boys. The laws gave white men, European men, access to our women and to all women. And so there's a, there's a, 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 dichotomy, a dichotomy and an issue that we are dealing with still to this day because we're living in a false racial construct. And so that was where the Negro was created. And we had to uh, 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 endure that, particularly during Jim Crow, where we were trained generationally uh, how to act within a false racial construct. So there's a mental illness that comes with that. There's an unease where we're trying to find our way. Now, some of us, my generation, your generation, our generation, uh, uh, Lord Jamar, is the generation that uh, created hip hop and we, 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 we rebelled from this, this consciousness of the Negro or what I call third frequency in our ministry. And we developed the nigga. We were like, I don't want to be a Negro. I don't want to be a sellout. I don't want to be a coon. I'm going to be a real ass nigga. Well, the problem with that is, is that that's a false racial construct as well. And here's the problem. You can't solve your problems in the same false racial constructs that created the problem. We mm. have to learn and relearn that we're first frequency first. What causes us to endure? Now we have gone through the most amount of trauma than any other species uh, in, 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 in human history. The African-American is the strongest, most durable, venerable, undefeatable group uh, ever. And that scares the ish out of this uh, false racial construct we call white whiteness or the European, because we cannot be destroyed. We don't die, we multiply. And so as a result, we have to look at what does first frequency really mean? It means that regardless of what we have gone through, regardless of what we're going through right now, what you're going through right now, you are a God or a goddess having that experience and that you were born perfect and that you are okay but it was this system that you were born into that tried to make you believe that you're not okay. Something's wrong with you. You're not quite right. You're three fifths of a human. 
you're this, you're that. You're nothing because you have nothing and are nothing. That's all BS. That's actually how they feel about themselves. That was actually in history, historically, who they were even before coming to this continent. And so the whole game has been to get us to believe that white is right and, and, and black stands for be lack. No, it's the opposite. We've always been the kings and queens. We've always been gods and goddesses. And this is the only country that has the most amount of laws ever written in any government that captures, uh, captures controls and corrals black people. So I say that nothing's wrong with black people. Something happened to black people. We're not sick people. We're sick from being captured, corralled and controlled by sick people. But once we understand that, that begins our freedom truly in the awakened consciousness of quote unquote being woke. If you're just joining us, we're here talking with our brother, Reverend Philippe Shock Matthews. Um, so talk to me about the four trauma implant imprints that stop black people from progressing and moving forward. What are these four trauma imprints that you speak of? Sure. So <clears throat> we kind of talked about it a little bit when, when we talked about genetic trauma. The first trauma is genetic trauma, trauma that is epigenetics. And epi means above the genetics. What we discovered is uh, years ago, I, I did an interview, several interviews with uh, Dr. Joy DeGruy, who wrote the book Post Traumatic Slave Syndrome. At the time, uh, when I was interviewing Dr. Joy DeGruy, she didn't even know the concept of epigenetics because I wasn't in her first iteration of her of her book. I remember having a conversation with her as I was studying and talking to various different uh, psychologists and psychiatrists uh, on my show, unpacking this concept of epigenetics, of what happens when uh, your trauma can be transferred generationally. So we know about our hot black hole through the DNA, through the body, through yes. the DNA. Yeah, you you know your, your 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 mother and father created you, but they had trauma, and that trauma was already manifested in you. Then their trauma, and it goes back fourteen generations, and so fourteen generations. If you put twenty five uh, in there as a generation, we're looking at three hundred fifty years. So epigenetically or genetic trauma is the trauma that we are just we come here with, and so before our personalities are formed, before our nervous systems uh, can handle it, before our brains can even process it. We have a certain proclivity of trauma that we act up and act out. Some of it, some of it can be good. Some of it can be bad. We've all heard and probably said in, in, in our family structure, oh, so-and-so has been here before. And that's because there's an ancestral memory that, that, that is tracked and traced. And all of the things that cause that cause us to be undefeatable and durable is transferred in that in, in, in that seed. So that's genetic memories or epigenetics that that uh, we come here with. Um, the second type of trauma is what we call decontextualized trauma. Mm. Decontextualized trauma is trauma that doesn't have a time date or a time stamp on it. In other words, something happened to us, something was done to us, uh, and we do, it, and it was done so often and so repeatedly that it became part of our personality. And so when we say, well, that's just the way so-and-so is, he always or she always acts that way when whatever happens. When any time someone says that, what they're really saying is that that person is acting out in trauma. Because once trauma, decontextualized and genetic trauma take a hold of you, it acts as if it's your personality. So you think that's who you are, and it's not. It's your trauma trying to protect you in a maladaptive way. And so you have these PTSD symptoms. And again, you think something's wrong with you. Nothing's wrong with you. You have been uh, attacked and assaulted uh, by trauma and it's decontextualized. And so when we look at this concept that Dr. William A. Smith refers to as racial battle fatigue, that we're constantly under the signal and the frequency, the vibration of trauma white trauma, white terrorism, that takes a toll and it becomes decontextualized. And because you're born into it, you think this is your normal way of life. You think struggling financially is normal. You think being broke is normal. You think 
having to be on the grind is normal. You think that being in the quote unquote hood is normal and natural. There's nothing natural about it. This was done to us. So when I look at my family and I look at my family acting up or acting out in any kind of way, and regardless of what quote unquote nefarious activities they're in, I love my people unconditionally because I understand that uh, when you were a little boy, a little girl, I don't think anybody said, I'm going to grow up and be a, a, a great alcoholic. I'm going to be the best uh, 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 molester I can be. I'm going to be the greatest drug addict uh, that I could ever be. That wasn't a childhood goal. What, what happened to you? And this is, again, nothing's wrong with you. Something happened to you. So first trauma is genetic trauma. Second type of trauma is decontextualized trauma. Third type of trauma is vicarious trauma or secondary trauma. Secondary trauma, again, I, we wake up in the mornings, we mind in our own business, we turn on our phones or our tablets or whatever device, and we see our, our brothers and sisters being gunned down, murdered in the streets. We weren't there uh, when Trayvon Martin was killed. We weren't there when Sandra Bland was killed. We weren't there when George Floyd was killed, uh, Philando Castile, Alton Sterling, Tamir Rice, the list goes on and on, Breonna Taylor, Ahmaud Aubrey. When we see this, we feel some kind of way. It, in, it imprints a vicarious or secondary trauma. We are traumatized and triggered by seeing our folks, our family being mutilated and killed and, and having the law enforcement, which represents second frequency, uh, do nothing. The legal system do nothing. So yet again, now we have the genetic trauma, we have our decontextualized trauma, and now every time we turn on our device, we are uh, seeing and reinstalling uh, 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 secondary trauma or vicarious trauma. Those three traumas, when you combine them in, the, in a black body, creates the fourth level of trauma that we call ghosting trauma. Now, normally ghosting trauma is, 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 is thought about in terms of, you know, you go out, go out on a date with somebody and they, and they don't call you back and they ghost you. That's not, <laughs> that's one aspect of ghosting trauma. The type of ghosting trauma that I'm talking about is more insidious. Ghosting trauma is when you have been traumatized for so long that you have an imminent sense of doom, mm. that something bad is going to happen to me or to my family, or to my loved ones. And it starts to cause you to pull back and try to live your best and better life. And you start to move into a smaller place in your life. And, and, and you start to go into uh, this, this concept that, you know, maybe I don't deserve uh, to be happy. Maybe I ain't shit. Maybe I ain't no good. Maybe I'm not, uh, what, you may, maybe I am what uh, I feel and what uh, people have told me and what this system has told me. And so ghosting trauma causes you to limit your life, minimize and marginalize your life because you feel something wrong is going to happen. And so as a result of feeling like something bad is going to happen, you no longer do things that make, make you feel good. You no longer seek uh, higher omnipotent conscious knowledge because you feel something is not right. And that that's why trauma is so powerful. It takes over the personality because you think it's you. You feel this, you know, I'm, I'm feeling, un, you know, uneasy. I can't go over in that area. I can't do this. I can't do that. And so now you're starting to make that that comfort zone as palatable as possible. But the, the, your world has shrunk so much that you never move forward. And now you become a, your own self-saboteur and it becomes a domino effect. Uh, I, I don't have money. You know, I had I had my brother, our, our brother, uh, Freeway Ricky Ross on my show many times. And I remember that first interview. It changed my life. Uh, his story changed my life. He changed my life because he was an example of what happens to a black body when all you want to do is feed your family. All you want to do is have some level of uh, equality, parity. Uh, it, it, you just want to be left alone. You want to be able to grow. You want to be able to eat. You want to be able to do all these things, but you can't. So now I got to go out here and sell these rocks. I got to go out here and, and, and quote unquote, create crime 
in order so that I can eat. Well, no offense to anybody, and this is probably radical, but it ain't your fault that you're selling drugs. It ain't your fault that you're stripping. It ain't your fault that you are uh, doing dirt out here in these streets. That was done to you. It's, you're not responsible for what has happened to you. You're accountable for what you do about it. But did any of you say uh, when you were little kids, hey, when I grow up, I got to go out here. I must, can't wait to sell rocks. I can't, sell to, can't wait to try crack. I can't wait to get strung out on alcohol. No. That wasn't a goal. Something pushed you to that. Something forced you into that. And so this is why it's so insidious, because once we understand and take back uh, our first frequency godship or goddess ship, if you will, we then start looking at it as a separate thing from us, as opposed to us and getting lost in the in the frequency and in the matrix, <laughs> metaphorically and, meta, um, uh, uh, and Morpheus speaking. <laughs> We start to look at it and say, wait a minute, if nothing's wrong with me, then something truly had to happen to me. What is it that happened to me? It's those four traumas that were imprinted onto us as a result of being born into this oppressive situation that we're in called America KKK. Now, America uh, was white. And so in order for this European, this psychopathic, sociopathic entity to survive, they would not have been able to survive playing equal because we are the first archetype, the first frequency, the first idea, the first gestation, the first concept of humanity created by the creator. When you're created by the creator first, well, you're a god. <laughs> you're a god and a goddess. Any ethnicity that comes after that comes in second, and, and, and as a result, Dr. Fres uh, Francis Chris Welsing teaches us that they're recessively genetic. Well, when you're recessively genetic, there's a, uh, uh, you, you are, your, your, your uh, uh, living becomes suspect because you're always up against extinction. So this Amu second frequency European recognized the concept that they could be genetically annihilated off the planet because of the dominant gene, the dominant force of Africans and African-Americans. So in order to do that, they had to create an entire system and create false science, dar you know, false Darwinism and, 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 and all of that crap about three fifths and the black brain or skull being smaller and all that. All of that is BS. But in order for them to survive, and have an equal chance, they had to create all of this, all of these lies that traumatizes our black bodies, installs and imprints those four traumas. Now, now we're sitting up thinking, you know, uh, you're born into it and you think that this is the way life is. No, I can show you your best life in five seconds once you understand the concept of what has happened to you. Right. Now, don't you think as I listen to you, I'm like, yeah, this is exactly it. But now let's look on the flip side. Let's okay. understand that this white man, he suffered his own trauma, mm -hmm. which is why he's inflicting trauma on other people. Mm -hmm. Because if you think about it, traumatized people, traumatized people, right? So so think about it like this man started in the caves. Right. You know what I mean? He 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 was cold. He had, he didn't know how to create fire and 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 nature was like, you know what I mean? It, it was a scary right. thing to him. That's why to this day he's scared of nature. He's scared of the dark. He's scared of 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 animals. He's scared of 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 just the, the elements and shit like that. You know what I mean? He's traumatized by that. He's traumatized by his lack of knowledge when he came um, at the feet of, you know, great Africans like the Egyptians and all of that type of shit. He's yep. traumatized by that. He's traumatized by his own barbarism 
that he committed against his own people. Phenomenal. Fun. Facts, facts, 100%. When, Dude, when they talk you're, about you're the there. middle, yes. getting medieval on a motherfucker and all of that Game type of, of shit. There's a reason why Game of Thrones is the number one show in the world because it is their time that they were uh, in glory. That was their highest time. See, when we go back to him, when we go back in our history, we created history. We we mastered all science. We mastered uh, uh, all uh, uh, education. Uh, we populated the entire planet. We created all uh, medicine. We built pyramids and civilizations that cannot be duplicated or replicated to this day. When we go back, we go back to God. We go back to our original frequency and signal. When they go back, they go back to the caves. They go back into the dark ages. They go back into which, where nature over a hundred thousand years traumatized them and turned the African that the Africans that went into the Caucasus Mountains inside out, which I've called an anti-African. So whatever happened within those hundred thousand years of, of, of generational breeding of those Africans, that last 5,000 years of being subject to 200 to 400 below zero temperatures, and this is science, this is not uh, a smack of any culture uh, or an affront to any culture, this is just science. But most of us, we don't know this science. We don't know that this is not self-esteem, this is science. What happens when you are generationally exposed to sub-below temperatures, there's no sunlight, mm. you turn into an anti-African. The African comes out of you because guess what? And you said it, which was so brilliant, uh, which is one of the reasons why I love you so uh, and respect you so, uh, is because you said they, they are afraid of the dark. Well, let's, let's, let's look at this now. Hmm. When, when, if you look at Dr. Sebi, Dr. Sebi always talked about uh, melanin and the power of melanin, but he also said that before you can talk about melanin, you got to talk about carbon. Well, carbon is black. We come from the black. There's a reason why we were birthed on the equator, why we were closest to the sun, why we were closest to the creator. Everything, we come into existence being in a cosmic black womb of our mothers. We come into the dark. We manifested, the Dogon literally uh, had uh, entire scientists in their communities that were uh, never came out in the sunlight because they wanted to make their irises adapt to the dark so that they could see going through a spiritual process uh uh uh, uh the, the the cyrus b they they were able to map out the stars because they understand everything came from the black we're not afraid the african go back into ancient history go back into your books go back to your scholars and ask them is there any text that's out there whereby ancient Africans were afraid of the dark or had nightmares and terrors? No. How can you have a nightmare when you've mastered the earth, you've mastered the heavens, you've mastered the animals, you've mastered everything? What is there to be afraid? What, where, where would a nightmare come, come from? Why would, and why would you be afraid of the dark? This, again, is taught to us. That, that we are, I talk about this concept in, in, in lesson, lessonsinshock.com. Uh, I talk about this in the first lesson. In the ancestral memory and in the ancestral realm, they are afraid of the dark on multiple levels. When I say they, I'm talking about second frequency, I move. They are afraid of the dark. They are afraid of dark energy, dark matter. Uh, and how to manipulate it, how to use it, because we are masters of that naturally, because we're gods having uh, uh, this, this, this human experience. And we were here hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of thousands of years before there was even such a thing as an Amu or second frequency. And so we, when we look at the totality of what we have mastered, what we're trying to do with first frequency of oneness is truly awaken you to who you are. And I had to look at the landscape of quote unquote ministry. And I had to come in a way that I said, okay, I, I don't want to lie to people. I don't want to, uh, I, I don't want to be the guy that says, you know, we have to all come together 
and we're all equal. We all bleed the same. Uh, we all need to talk about this and come. No, how can, and, and, and I got it. And it's a very precarious place to be in from a ministerial perspective, but you get it and understand it as a, as a, as a five percenter, you understand that how can we be equal if we're superior and God hmm. created us first? We're, <laughs> d- there is no equality. They're recessively genetic. And so we have to understand that that's, that's the Amu. That's not going to change. They, we cannot change, they cannot change themselves genetically. We can change ourselves epigenetically. They're suffering from uh, the genetics of the ice. We're suffering from the epigenetics of the trauma that they inflicted on us when they came to this continent. That can be changed. That's why we're gods and goddesses having a human or racial experience because we're dealing with uh, an ancestral memory that we have to overcome. And I feel like, not, not to cut you off, but I feel like they are too. You see, this is why... This is why the unexplainable, um, like when they pull somebody over, when they pull a black man over and they unexplicably, you know, feel like, oh, my God, they're going to kill me. Like, like this is because within their epigenetics, there's a certain guilt. There's a certain guilt there for the shit that they did. They feel like retribution is coming. They know that we are the gods and goddesses and they're scared that we're going to whip out a can of god and goddess whoop ass whatever that may entail they are they literally have the fear of god like i see white people chase other white people uh, police around cars with guns they don't react the same that's right because that racial memory that epigenetic Memory is not there for them when it comes to interacting with us. I think when they know, they feel like, damn, we got a lot of, we got away with a lot of shit against God. And something in their DNA is telling them, yo, these motherfuckers, like today could be the day. Like I might be that example of... Of, of of black people's frustration against white people and I don't want to be that. That's right. And 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 it's like it just I'm telling you, it just seems irrational. And this is the only way to explain it mm-hmm. is that it is in their fucking DNA to a right. point where right. they don't even fully understand why they they're don't so know, scared bro. of us. They don't know their they don't they, fully understand they don't know their history. We don't know some of us, what people who watch your show and my show and, and what we know our history. But most of us uh, don't even know our own history. So they don't know their history. I know white history and black history. Uh, and so I know them better than they know themselves. And that's a terror. They assume that we know genetically something is something's amiss. Something's not right with them. And it's a gut reaction. Every time these uh, 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 race soldiers uh, take one of us out, and they go through a debrief, and this has been, you know, shown in massive articles and what have you. Is why did you uh, pull the trigger so quickly? Why did you unload your clip and then reload your clip and sh- and 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 go again? And most times when we're talking about trauma, they're saying, "I don't know. I just blanked out and I just went into my quote unquote training." No, it was a genetic reaction to that black body, and scientifically and spiritually what that black body represents and you can't as a white person decode that you can't explain that and we're looking at it and i'm seeing it that's an ep- we're looking at right now what we're going through uh in this country with elections we're looking at uh, and some black folk that we call third frequency the negro consciousness the go along get along uh stevens of django and chain in the world that we look at, some of them are like, well, why don't they like us? What's wrong? Why is the country so divided? You're dealing with a genetic uh, uh, mishap of the ice. You're dealing with uh, a recessively genetic population that is vulnerable to not just death, but vulnerable to extinction. You see, we're fighting to, to stay alive. 
they're fighting to stay around and to stay relevant. That's a different fight. That's a different trauma. And until you understand that we are not in fear of extinction, because we've always been here, we always will be here. Where there's a creator, there's an African. And so as a result, I'm not worried about, that's why we're able to look at our ancestral lineage, why we're able to connect with our ancestors. Because we don't die, we just transform. When they die, that's it. They don't go to an ancestral realm. They don't go back to Wakanda. They go back to the ice of the trauma of being uh, in the caves. When they came here, that's where the term, before uh, Jews and Irish and Polish and Italians, they had to be initiated to be white. They had to work at being white. They weren't considered white. In fact, the Irish were called Irish niggers. That was what they were called. They called themselves niggers and lubbers. And that's where the term white trash came from because they came from nothing. And genetically, that's all they see is going back to being nothing. And they feel that emptiness. They feel that nothingness. And when they see particularly an Eidos, an African descendant of slavery, when they see an African-American male or female, but particularly an African male, they are terrified. And I know this because white folks have told me. I've had Robin D'Angelo on my show who unpacked um, white fragility. And she said, I prefer to be around African men than African-American men. Now, why is that? She says, because the African doesn't have the story and the history of the African-American male. And so as a result, she can't buttress that. You can't, you know, when they, uh, they start saying, well, what about the people who have been in trauma and the Holocaust and all that? Look, there is no person, no people on this planet that we can have a pissing contest with in terms of what we have gone through for 500 years, 294 years of chattel slavery, uh, uh, 94 some plus years of, of Jim Crow. When you understand that these people, us, we don't die, we multiply. That's scary. How do you control that? How do you handle that? Because I'm fighting as a white, you know, I'm acting like I'm a white person. I'm, I'm fighting for my, my inner Becky and Bob and my inner Karen uh, uh, and, 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 and to, to, to be here, to not go extinct, to not go back to being white trash, to not going back to the nothingness from which I came. When we go back into our history, oh my God, we're all that in a bag of chips. That's why we're first frequency. And that's what I want to celebrate with my family to understand. I don't care how bad you think your life is right now. family. I don't care if you're on drugs, selling drugs, uh, on welfare. I've been, I've, I've been homeless. I've been on welfare. I've been, I've been at the bottom of the pit and even at the worst physical environmental situation that I've been in, we're still gods and they're still afraid of us. Why? And we have to understand why it's not, it's not hate. We think, oh, they hate us. No, they hate us because they ain't us. It's fear. It's a fear that they can never be us. They can never do what we've done. They don't have our story. They don't have our history. And that scares the, you know, what out of them. And as a result, that's what we're up against. Once we understand that we're spiritually superior, physically su uh, superior, mentally, emotionally, metaphysically, scientifically, we're superior people. And I'm talking about the person that ne that's uh, that that you know didn't go to school. I'm talking. I don't the, the lowest of quote unquote what society would consider the lowest of the low, the homeless, uh, uneducated population, whatever. You are God at the highest expression and level. You just don't know that yet. You don't know you can go back into your first frequency and reveal it because you already are first frequency. You don't have to uh, go every seven days to look at this quote unquote white boy on a stick and these white deities to try to come up. You already are up. You just have to wake up and then you can go up. Uh, I just want to address the uh, shout out to Breadman TV. He said police 
a, a police does not shoot an unarmed black man because of fear. He does it because he can. Listen, it's a, it's it's uh, it's always going to be a family of things. Like mm-hmm. like fear is not going to be the only thing, but God damn it, fear is absolutely a factor in it. Like no question. And let's look at this quote. Let's look at this because he can. Well, why would you? Let's 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 analyze that and let's metaphysically take a deeper look into what, that. Hang on, before we do this, I just want to say shout out to Brooklyn Queen one twenty five. Thank you for your donation. We appreciate it. If you're just joining us, we talk. Uh, we're talking with Reverend Philippe Shock Matthews. Go ahead, brother. Yeah, brother, no problem. So so when we look at well, I you know let's say I shoot black people because I can. Well, let's look at that psychopathic uh, behavior. Where does that come from? You do something nefarious, you do something illegal, you do something that creates a moral injury, you go against ma'at. Why would you do that? What's inside of you that would cause you to do the can? Uh, and that co- when you look at this concept called cause and effect, everything has a co- every effect has a cause. Our jobs as first frequency people is to find the cause of the effects and not look at an effect and create another effect, which keeps us in darkness. It keeps us uh, uh, hidden from the understanding of what is happening to us. If I say I'm going to kill somebody because I can, I have to first ask, well, why would I want to kill that person in the first place? What is causing me to dislike and hold some level of threat against this person that I don't even know, a stranger? Again, that goes back to fear. Because here's something that I did uh, in, uh, I wrote a a book uh, in a process called The Hidden Signal uh, and the Four Metaphysical Frequencies. And I went to probably about 10 different scholars from Dr. Oba Deshaka, Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene, Dr. David Imhotep, and and others, Dr. Leonard Jeffries. And I asked some, some key questions. I said, Doc, is there any uh, uh, ancient history uh, or, or, or books written where uh, Africans uh, genocide an entire population of people and took over a country? Nope, hmm. never happened. Uh, is there any uh, 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 history of, of, of Africans, uh, ancient Africans, you know, Kemet, Egypt, Kush, uh, Twa, Mbuti, Dogon, is there is there any ancient history of of Africans uh, creating uh, a false racial construct and subjecting those people to that false racial construct? Nope. Is there any history of ancient Africans um, shooting up schools and churches and synagogues? Nope. Is there any ancient history of Africans? installing black codes or, or or to oppress white people or white codes or anything, any semblance of Jim Crow uh, laws that Africans have imposed uh, on other uh, humans? No. You see, when you start to go into the cause and effect of things, there are things that Africans don't do. That even with all of our trauma, we ain't shooting up schools and killing kids. We're not going and shooting up uh, churches. We're not Thanks. going and shooting up uh, concerts just because we can. We're not uh, creating Jim Crow laws to oppress an entire population of people and redlining them so they can't buy property and create wealth. This is stuff that we don't do. Even though we're traumatized, there is a code. There is a first frequency code that because we are God's chosen, we are God's favorite. And by the way, uh, so I'm, p- I'm saying this publicly on this platform. Anybody comes to you and say, we're the chosen people. You run like hell because the chosen people are the people who were chosen first by God, the creator, to be created by God, by the creator, to manifest reality on this planet. I'm sorry, family. We are the chosen people. And we are also as a result of what we have gone through on this continent, we are the Christ consciousness or the Jesus Christ of our time because we've gone through our crucifixion. It's now time for our resurrection. And that resurrection is consciousness, that first frequency of oneness, consciousness, understanding who you are spiritually. It's okay to go back in time and do a Sankofa and know about how great you were. No, 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 no. You have to know how great you are. 
how great we are right now. And I don't care if there's roaches crawling across your screen right now, because I know and I remember when I was moving up in consciousness and learning this and, and roaches were literally falling from my ceiling into my glass of water. True story. Hmm. As I'm going through this process, I don't care where you are. I don't care what you have gone through or grown through. You are a god or goddess having this wretched experience that we call Eidos, that we call uh, being uh, Negroes and niggas here in this, uh, out here in these streets. That is not our identity. It is a false identity. And once we understand that we are first frequency, then we can become bilingual. When I go around the Amu and second frequency, I know how to handle that. When I'm around Negroes and my, and, and, and my niggas, my real niggas out there, I know how to speak the language, but I don't identify as such because I'm a first frequency God. And there's certain things that gods don't do. And so we have to look at what does it mean to be human, uh, uh, Lord Jamar? Humans don't genocide. Humans don't sit up and say the best type of Indian is a dead Indian. Humans don't do that. Hmm. Subhumans do. Man, who have not mankind, do. mankind, a kind of man would do that. Yeah. You yeah. Because there's humans and there's mankind. Right. Two different things. That's exactly correct. That is 100 percent. And so once we accept, we have to make this separation because one of the problems. So you remember uh, in, in when you were reading the bio, uh, there was a part in there about axiology. Axiology is a study of how. Our value systems are shaped by our environment. So mm -hmm. how was the Amu's value system shaped by being in the ice? How was our value system shaped by being in the sun uh, and, and being here first? When we look at this value system, when we look at axiology and how the environment conditions us, you have to look at the condition that you were born into, which is the axiology that created your value system and what you value is, is safety and, and, and putting us in survival mode. We have been birthed into a false axiology, but because we're people to people, that is our axiology. That is, we, we, we are communal people. We are people to people. We want so desperately, one, to look at these people like we see ourselves and see them as humans. Well, we have a problem when we do that because now we have to explain, well, why would a human do that? Well, a human wouldn't. Hmm. The other thing that we have to look at in our axiology and value systems is uh, we want to be loved and accepted. And that causes us to compromise our values. And then we allow them in. And I'm sorry, whiteness, and I had... Uh, Dr. Jacqueline Ballalora on my on my show several times. She wrote a book called, she's a white lady, uh, a sociologist, scholar, wrote a book called uh, Birth of a White Nation. And it was about how white people and why white people were invented in this country as a matter of law. She's also an attorney and a, a historical legal researcher. And I asked her point blank. I said, is there any such thing as a good white person? She says, no. <laughs> I asked her the question. Is there such a thing as good white people? And she says, well, Philippe, white was invented to divide. She said, white people were created to do only two things. One, uh, divide and conquer humanity. And two, protect the 1%. That's it. There's no other purpose of whiteness. And so when we look at that, part of our axiology wanting to find the proverbial good white person and make them into our image and likeness of good people, we end up imparting and printing more trauma onto our bodies. And we go into racial battle fatigue because we keep trying to teach uh, subhumans to be human. That's what we're really trying to do. Oh, let's sit up and talk about it and have a conversation. Well, I shouldn't have to have a conversation about uh, how do you have a conversation and make right about genociding an entire population of people? How do you make right and human out of uh, enslaving people into perpetuity? And it just so happens that we got out because the creator said enough is enough. But how do you enslave people? How do you rape uh, 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 men, women, and children 
uh, and, 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 and capture and torture and kidnap them and then ship them over three months and put them into slavery, into perpetuity. How, humans don't do that. Humans don't do that. Subhumans do that. People who have not fully evolved on the, on the, on the uh, human cha food chain or tree do that. But this is a subhuman species that we're in concept that we're dealing with. And when white was created, you have whiteness, which is the behaviors uh, of, of this false racial construct of white. That's a false sense of privilege that they have given themselves, which is where white privilege, quote unquote, comes from. Private law, pr privilege, private law. When, when white privilege is challenged, it creates white fragility. When white fragility is challenged, it creates white rage. And so when we look at the Tulsa, Oklahoma bombings, we look at here is privilege. We say because we're first frequency, even though we don't have the language and know that, but we know that we are all of that in a bag of chips because we are, we, we endured. We created everything. We are in segregation. We're in Jim Crow. Okay, we're still going to build the richest, wealthiest community. Uh, known to the to the uh, the continent at the time, and so that smacked of their white privilege. It created white fragility, and as a result, when white fragility is is challenged, white rage ensues, and now they get violent. Here, another question that I asked the scholars, uh, uh, Lord Jamar, is there any history, any history, ancient history of Africans lynching each other, or lynching another? No, that's something that white folk do. That is something that inhumane people do. So you have to look at the history and then you have to look at how that history is manifesting right now today, how those four traumas are installed and imprinted in our bodies and ask the question, where do, we, where do I grow from here? Once I realized that I was first frequency, I was a God or a God is having a human experience, there is certain stuff and ish that doesn't even happen to me. I remember you and I having a conversation, Jamar, uh, after our show, and we were talking about this concept. And you were saying, because you are a God having a human experience, there's certain stuff that you are always around, particularly in the music industry and in the rap world and, and, and in the streets, that did not affect you. Mm. It didn't, it, 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 you saw and you personally know right. some of your brethren that didn't make it. They're strung out on drugs. They're 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 broke. They're in they're 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 incarcerated. Their their lives are mess. And you did the same shit, but it didn't affect you. Why? Because you knew you were a god having a human experience, and so the earthly situation that was on you, that environment, that axiology, did not become your personality. And so you overcame certain traumas. That, that were installed in you, imprinted in you, but you had a spiritual system that you were, uh, that, that got to you at, a, at an early age that caused you, you're still going to go through life, you're still going to go through some ish, but because you are a God having a human experience, you go through it from a higher level of causation. That's my goal with first frequency with the family. You're going to go through some ish family, but you're going to go through it as first frequency. So it won't have the impact on you to take your freedom and take your life and that you end up growing old and dying with your music still in you and never reaching your highest level of potential. I am about that shock life. I am about first frequency family first, African first. As a result, being a minister, I had to go completely against um, all of the uh, uh, lies uh, of, of, of synergy, equality, we're all oneness and all of this. I had to go against all of that to tell the truth. You can't go into a ministry or church right now and they're talking about your four genetic trauma, your four types of traumas and what the Amu did to you. Why? Because most of the ministries that are out there are making money from white folks and Europeans in their congregation. I don't allow what Europeans in my ministry. This ain't for you. This is for us, by us. And so there's a level of truth that I can bring, a level of scientific proof that I can bring to the community uh, from a spiritual metaphysical understanding that nothing's wrong with you. Something happened to you.
here's what happened to you and here's why. And, and how many, here's what you can do about it. And how many reverends will sit down with a brother uh, while he smokes a blunt? And um, Right. Do I need to get mine? I need to have these kind of conversations. I was about to get mine. I was like, okay, I got some tools. I got some edibles. Let me pull out my edibles. Hold on a moment. Let's have this conversation. You see what I'm saying? We have some real shit here. Okay. If you're just joining us, we're with Reverend Philippe Shock Matthews. So, you know, we're in this election time. They're counting their fake votes right now and all this type of shit or whatever the case may be. Right, right. Um, you know, you got the platinum plan. You got the lift every voice plan. You know, plan, plan, plan. You know, I don't know if anybody's doing anything, but you got a lot of plans going on. Um, within Biden's plan, the, the men there was a mention of reparations where he said he would commit to a study. He'll commit to a study of reparations. Now, I've heard you talk about the concept of Self reparations. What exactly are self reparations, and why would it be important for the community to master such a thing? It's a touchy and painful subject because I know we are hurt. Uh, we are emotional. We are highly sensitive people, and we want some level of accountability. Now, here's the problem. Um, back in the day, uh, my kung, my, my, I remember my kung, my late kung fu instructor Tony Roberts telling me, "Never box with a boxer, never wrestle with a wrestler." I can't expect the person who has shot me, raped me, uh, brutalized me, to restore me. I can't expect that. Mm. I can't expect morality from immoral people. And so as a result, I had to figure out how do I come off of the grid or come off of the plantation? There is enough Africans and African-Americans on this continent where I never have to work for or with another white person or another white corporation ever for the rest of my life. Hmm. We all have that ability to do that. I come from... Uh, digital marketing, internet marketing. One of the reasons why uh, I, I know so many of these people and I got that endorsement from Mark Victor Hansen, Chicken Soup for the Soul, is because I, I was privy to, and usually the first and only black person in those rooms, of how to uh, create digital wealth, how to master the internet, where you make money, where you don't have to leave the house to earn a, a, a good living uh, and a quality lifestyle. And so as a result, self-reparations is learning how to create, just as your spiritually first frequency, how to spiritually create your own wealth. Now, if I don't have to go and be around white people, if I don't want to, if I don't have to work for the white man or massa, then I don't have to worry about saying the truth and living my truth. Now, there's also a study uh, that was done by Dr. Tommy J. Curry and Dr. William A. Smith that coined the phrase racial battle fatigue, that what they discovered in their research, and this is peer reviewed by the way, is that literally just being in proximity of white people makes us sick. There's psychological and physiological symptoms. Black people come down. You think that the headaches, the migraines, the back aches, the stomach aches, the ulcers, the high blood pressure, you think that's natural. No, that's from being around Amu, second frequency sick people. There's my, my queen is a nurse and she hit me to this concept called secondary syndrome. Uh, and secondary syndrome is when medical students start to come down with uh, uh, symptoms of the diseases that they're, they're studying. studying. Mm. Uh, again, we're not sick. We're sick from being around sick people. If you got to go to that job, that around those sick people, you're gonna be sick. If you're going, you can go psychologically make yourself sick, dude. You, what choice do you have? 
Just like if the That's media gets on TV, just like if they get on TV every day and say Corona, 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 you're going to feel like, do I have Corona? You're going to start giving yourself fucking symptoms. Absolutely. Absolutely. Psychologically. And I told y'all motherfuckers this early. This this, and, and everything that you have told the community, which is one reason why I rock with you. There's many reasons why I rock with you, but that's one of them is that you tell the truth because this is science. This is not an opinion. Right. This is this is not oh, I feel some kind of way. No, this is just science. And when you understand science, that's omniscience, omniscience, omnis- omniscience, omnipotent, omnipotent. Mm. This is what that means as first frequency Africans and Africans Americans. This is who we are naturally. But we are in this state of confusion. I even had uh, Professor Maynu Ampim on. Doc, uh, Professor Maynu Ampim was the brother who found the brother who wrote the false Willie Lynch letter. The Willie Lynch letter was a prefabricated by a black man, black professor, who wrote this letter. But it's not the fact that the letter is false. It's what the letter implicated. It implicates what happens when you are born into uh, a concept that you think is real. You're born into a holodeck. You're born into a matrix. And the ish looks real, but it's not. And as a result, because you're sitting here and rona, rona, rona all the time, you think that ish is real. It is real for them and for certain people at lower frequencies and lower vibrations, but it won't affect you the same way when you are in a higher state and in that first frequency of consciousness. So this is where we get confused because we think, well, if I just think positive and I be positive and I love everybody and I be good and I, and I smile and all of this, everything. No, it's not. You have to rise above it. You're still going to be tortured and tormented by this, this, this system, but it's not going to affect you as much as it's going to affect somebody who has given up and given in into that Negro or, 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 or nigger consciousness or those Negroes that feel like we just all have to get together. Why can't we just all get along? Namaste, namasta. I love you. And this, no, all of that, that's, that's just bull. That's just crap. And that's why I wanted to become a minister because I wanted to teach people from a ministerial standpoint and perspective. Here is the real, here's the real ish. This is, you know, the white boy on a stick, this is all fabricated, family. I'm sorry. I, you know, I know it hurts some of you that 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 we have been captured and contra- uh, controlled and corralled to believe that this white boy on a stick is going to come back and save us. We're already saved. We were created the by the creator. Stick. What the? F- <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't want to curse on the show. But no, I like that. I like how that sound. White boy on a stick. It's a white boy on a stick. Are you serious right now? Is that what we're doing right now, family? Like every damn every seven days, I'm going. I'm gonna use that one. Up, a white boy on a stick. That <laughs> never <walked the> earth. <laughs> he never walked the earth, dude. You can go oh, into every shit. museum on every continent, and you can find Africa. Go into and ask where are the artifacts you've dug up. Every time you go into the ground, the blacker it gets. So if you're going, if you're digging somebody up that's 100,000 years old and quote unquote, this white boy on a stick is about 5,000 years old, you would have thought by now that you would have found an artifact because you got to get to 5,000 feet before 5,000 years before you dig deep enough to get 100,000 years. So you would think that they would find some artifacts of, of, of this false doc, uh, document called the Bible created that you would find some artifacts that would be in a museum somewhere where we could literally say yeah that's that's real look at the ancient history of 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 either you know these these false religions that were created no you cannot now that is going to rub some people so hard but it's again the reason why i became a minister is to tell the truth i know ministers uh i'm working on my doctorate actually right now i got my master's degree in metaphysics but i'm working on my doctorate but I have had conversations with tenured uh, 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 Christian uh, doctors of theology, and we all know. We all say, "Yeah, yeah, we know." Uh, you know, at, at a certain level, they all teach you that this was all false. But because people are under this cloak and dagger, we have to we have to present this white boy on a stick and 
And we have to lie to the people in a very real sense because they have been beat down and oppressed so successfully, colonized, uh, domesticated and assimilated so well that they believe in a fantasy because they no longer know who they are. My job is to, and your job is to let us know this is who you are. You are a God. You are a Christ or Jesus walking this earth because you've been crucified. And now what does your resurrection look like? It looks like hanging out with Lord Jamar and Rev Shock. Okay. Real quick, uh, Rev. Um, I've had multiple people so far ask me how they can join your class. Mm. Now, do, are those the links that that we posted in the description? Are there some links? Yeah, to there's your links classes? in the description that okay. that 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 you can get everything shock. There's lessons in shock.com, which is on the screen. You can go there, it's free. Uh, and you go through all the uh, all the lessons, all the courses. I unpack everything. Uh, the response from you and the community literally has been overwhelming. Um, we, you know, I knew I uh, was was living this Maathian truth when thousands of you uh, start hitting me up in the comments and saying, "Oh my God, this is, I have never seen any ministers." put it like this before and make it this plain and understand it from a scientific perspective. And there's no emotion in this. This is not personal. This is science. You know, I'm trained uh, by the greatest thinkers and scholars of our time from Professor Kaba Hiawatha to uh, Kamene to Leonard Jeffries, James Smalls, uh, Dr. Obed Ashaka, uh, 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 you know, and even a, at the ancestral realm, every, lesson sermon that I do, I dedicate it to uh, uh, Dr. Francis Cress Welsing. And, and these are people that he's helping us get onto the Godcast as well, uh, just to let y'all know people. But anyway, go ahead. So uh, I'm sorry, what did you say, Brother Lord? No, I was saying and those, some of the people you mentioned, like um, Leonard Jeffries, Professor Small, yeah. these are some people that you're uh, actually helping to get uh, as guests on the Godcast as well. So I thank you for that. Oh, absolutely. And I'm sure our I, guests I, will thank you when we have them. Absolutely. First of all, I, 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 I've always uh, uh, loved your music, loved your work, and loved your contribution to the culture. Uh, unfortunately, I found out about you even more from when you were on, quote unquote, VLAD TV. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> just spell it out. You know, like with the kids, you know, like right. you spell it out. You know, you don't uh -huh. say a word, you spell it now. But that's how I came to know you. And I was like, I freaking love this dude. Who is this cat? And then it's like, oh, that's dude, brand Nubian. What? Oh, yes. And so then when I found out you had your own podcast, and then I found out you were in the Hoppy film, uh, shout out to Taki Grant, Felicia, uh, and all of you out there in the Hoppy film. Leonard Jeffries is in Hoppy and Infudishi and uh, Baba Huru and all that. And I saw you in the Hoppy film and I said, dude, I want to have a conversation with Lord Jamar. And then I come to find out your spiritual journey uh, and where you come from. And I'm like, well, dude, we speak the same language. We're coming from the same, we're cut from the same cloth. This is why we <laughs> survived and survived so well. And so when you had to, when you launched your God cast, I said, this guy is going to change some lives because we don't have that level of social consciousness uh, out here on a mass level. So I really, really commend you, brother. And I'm so honored that you have me on because you've had already some heavyweights on me. I know you got some heavyweights coming, but dude, I, I was like, you got Cube on there, you got Umar, you had Tyrek, you had you had uh, 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 um, uh, Brother Ali. I was like, wow, okay, this is the cat that we need to be looking at to have these conversations and unpack what is happening to us in the community. And so I just wanted to give you a shout out on that. But yeah, man, I, 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 I went into this with an understanding that this is not a ministry. This is not your grandmother's metaphysics. This is not for everybody. If you are a good Negro like Stephen and you're going along to get along and you're going out there every Sunday, every, every seven days, and you're giving your money to uh, to this concept of this white boy on a stick. This here, this right here, this right here is probably <laughs> is right not here. For, this right here, my, <laughs> this is probably not for you. This is for people who understand 
that first frequency, when, what does it mean to be made in the image and likeness? And this is the craziness. This is how insidious this lie is. You sit up and say you're made in the image and likeness of the creator. Well, when you want to see God, take a selfie. I don't have to look okay. at a white boy on a stick. When I want to see God, I'll go in the bathroom and look in the mirror. That's who you are. Fact. Now, that's something you have to accept and not even accept. It's something you have to know. So this is not about beliefs because beliefs can change. You have to know you are God. You have to know you are a goddess. And regardless of what you're going through, you could be a single mother. You could be strung out on crack. I don't care. You are God or a goddess and you are worthy of love. And you're okay. And I'm we'll sorry see. what has happened to you, but I'm telling you, I know that you can get out of this. And the only way to get out of this is going to that first frequency, going back into an un, uh, 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 revealing and, and taking out that trauma to become that first frequency God and goddess that you were born as and to be. Go ahead, brother. See, um, when you talked earlier about our conversation we had after the show and and part of being God is what saved us. I just wanted to um, <clears throat> add on to that a little bit as far as I was, it was instilled in me and grilled in me that part of being God was that you are the master of all things and nothing can master you. Yes. Okay. And that God is the highest elevation there is there's nothing higher than god that's correct okay so that being said when i would deal with any you know what i mean any kind of thing coming up you know what i mean because i came up in the 80s when it was wow we was man we was smoking dust fucking sniff coke all of that type of shit but <laughs> I mean, I was doing foul shit, but I knew I was God and I knew I, yep. nothing's going to master me. I'm not going to be right. ahead to nothing because I'm God. That's right. That's right. Then when it's like I get into the rap shit. And it's like a celebrity. OK, that's cool. But but a, being a celebrity is not being higher than God. How you can't gas me up with celebrity when I already <laughs> truly believe that when I'm you're God. God. Celebrity experience. Exactly. <laughs> so it's like okay. you can't really gas me up with that with that shit. And I'm just saying, once you know you God, know that God is the master. See yeah. what I'm saying? So you won't be that. You won't be that woman on drugs anymore. Once you realize, hey, wait a minute, this shit don't control me. I control it. That's right. That's you right. know what I mean? I'm the master of all things in my circumference. That's right. So nothing, nothing's going to control me or push my buttons or make me, you know what I mean? Absolutely. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. And, and, and that is what I really want. Uh, again, why I'm so happy to be on here with you. Because I know that you have an audience that that is hearing this and is getting it, uh, and because we are the smartest people, we are the scientists, we are everything. If uh, I forget who it was, somebody did a study that if all the uh, if, if if all the African Americans um, for even just a day stopped uh, uh, buying. Uh, 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 you know, white products or just stop, the entire country would collapse. And their extinction would be inevitable because if you look, if you step out, step back, they're on an extinction protocol. The creator has been trying to get rid of them for quite some time because nature, God doesn't make mistakes. Nature makes corrections. And so if something happens where there is an albino um, that, that is, is, is uh, an anomaly, nature tries to get it back to its original archetype, which is the original uh, dominated gene that it came from. Africans and African-Americans are the original archetype of God, of a, of a human being. The Amu, or second frequency 
is not that. And the only way they can survive is they have to come back into the archetype. And so as a result, they decided that they wanted to create xenophobia. They wanted to be their own species. They wanted to be their own group. And in that moment, it became oppositional because as Francis Chris, Dr. Francis Chris Welsing teaches us in this concept called reaction formation, you have a group of people who have been ostracized by the dominant group, by the Africans. You have a group that has devolved, not evolved because of the ice. So they lost their language. They lost their spirituality. What happens when you're exposed to 200, 400 below temperatures? You are not looking for God. You're looking for a way to live. You're looking for survival. So that pineal gland begins to shrink and you began to move into a psychopathic and sociopathic way of living. Dr. Edwin Nichols teaches us that sometimes it was only three months that they had to grow a crop and if they didn't, they had to eat each other. That's where cannibalism and Dracula and all that stuff comes from. This is not stuff that Africans do, but this is what they've gone through. And this extinction protocol is very real. Uh, and this genetic annihilation is very real. They want to come home, but they have no pathway back to first frequency because they've done such uh, moral injustice uh, to humanity in the Ma'afa. That is, how do you... I teach a course in LessonsInShock.com that kind of floored people. When I talked about the false concept of forgiveness, the reason that we as African people never created even the concept of forgiving is because we never would have broken any levels of moral codes or morality to forgive. But think about this. They had to create this false concept, religion, that no matter what dirt they do, they're forgiven. Well, in the cosmic consciousness and first frequency, they know they're not. When you create that level of moral injury, one of the things that they, that that is germane to African is when you want to uh, insulate and isolate and separate yourself from something negative, you never mention the name again. You never mention that person's name again. We have to get to a place where we start to relanguage and relabel because neural, neural nets, neurons that fire together, wire together. So if I keep saying uh, over and over again that we are equal, then, then I am creating a neural network that keeps me in perpetual bondage, mm. trying to make something right that ain't right. Mm. And so as a result, I end up losing my mind because I'm not in my, like Denzel Washington would say, are you on the outside of your mind? Yes, I am on the outside of my mind if I am trying to make sense of something that's senseless. If I'm trying to look at something as a human that is subhuman and trying to make a subhuman act human, I cannot do that. But if I do do that, I'm automatically in mental illness. I'm automatically cray cray. I have anxiety attacks. Something's, you know, I, I, I end up in a mental institution or I need to numb it down. So I got to string, string out, uh, get strung out on drugs and alcohol or whatever the, 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 the you know, sex addiction, whatever, the, whatever it is, I have to have an addiction to handle this insanity that I'm trying to make sane. That's the problem, family. There's nothing to forgive. You are right to be enraged. You are right to be angry. You are right to be pissed off. I, don't, I think pissed off is a little bit higher than anger. I'm not sure. But <laughs> you have the right, and there's nothing to forgive because what they've done is unforgivable in the law of nature. And that's why nature is doing this. We have to get out of the way and let nature eliminate them. They're already on a birth dearth. They were already moving themselves towards extinction off the planet prior to COVID. They have the highest level of suicide rates. They have the highest level of meth uh, and, and prescription drug overdose. They have the highest uh, 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 rate uh, of abortion. They have the highest rate uh, of, of uh, 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 not being able to procreate with one another. They, they have already moved themselves into a situation where they're becoming extinct. Then here comes the Rona. And for, there's a book by Pat Buchanan 
uh, the name of the book is Death of the West. <clears throat> in that book, he says, for every one of them that dies, every second frequency Amu European that dies, six of them are not born. Well, you can't keep doing that. At a certain point, the population diminishes and evaporates. This is why they say by 2050, the country, the world goes back black or brown. And the reason is, is because they've already been on a birth dearth because nature is trying to correct itself. And this is not our fight. We just have to get out of the way, protect ourselves, create self reparations, learn how to create our own economic uh, value, learn how to trade with each other again. <clears throat> And I think this is also one of the metaphorical reasons why Rona has come down on us to separate us. We're in a, in a, in a situation where we have to be separated from them because that's how we're getting our minds back again for the first time. Many of us are, are feeling peace of mind for the first time. There are some who says, oh, you know, I didn't have to go to see the white boy on a stick to make money and to be happy and to be prosperous. No, because you're now waking up realizing you are a god and a goddess all along having this false religious uh, uh, concept forced upon you. But when you have been broken down to your lowest common denominator, when you have been what we call successfully uh, colonized, assimilated, uh, domesticated, well, you believe anything because now you're in a trauma bond. Now you're in Stockholm syndrome. Now you're in capture bond. You have been captured and now you're controlled your entire life and survival is dedicated to praying to this white boy on a stick, working on a plantation called Coca-Cola or Amazon or whatever the plantation owner uh, name is. And now they're responsible for your income. They're responsible for your life and lifestyle, what kind of house you're going to live, what kind of food you're going to eat, how your kids are going to grow up. That's capture bonding but you're in a domestically violent relationship, that's trauma bonding. When you become a first frequency and understand how to move yourself up in consciousness, up in frequency and vibration, oscillate, spin at a higher frequency, you then begin to create incomes, in multiple income streams, and a lifestyle that separates you from the trauma, separates you from your captors, and now, as Stevie Wonder says, you now learn how to live in the world and not be of it. That is what Africans and African-Americans can do. And that's what we need to do during this time. This is the lesson that we need to learn during this time. So so talk to me about digital nomics and spiritual nomics. What so uh, most, most of my, my community... Uh, on my, on my show, no, <clears throat> I've had a six year relationship with with Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene, uh, uh, author of Spirituality Before Religions, and um, one of our literally one of our most beloved scholars, one of our most beloved, and we love them all. Uh, but Kaba is a special special breed, special dude. Um. I come from internet marketing. I come from social media marketing. I come from uh, e-commerce uh, uh, marketing and learning how to, I, I learn how to make enough money where I don't have to leave the house to work a job and to be able to create laptop income, you know, selling, becoming an information marketer and learning how to sell information because I'm looking at billions of us uh, that are on, uh, on this, on this planet and, multiple millions of us just on this continent. There's enough black to go around where everybody eats. And so what I decided to do uh, was to write this book, Digital Nomics, to teach people how to make money. You know, I, 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 I had to ask the question, if I went to prison uh, and I, I lost 20 years, how could I come out with all of the restrictions that are on me? And how could I come out and make six figures, seven figures legally uh, and, and without having to worry about my lifestyle and, and, and being able to survive. So I wrote this process that everybody who has a cell phone or a tablet can do. And I did this with Professor Kaba. So I took him on this journey and I said, brother, 
uh, just follow my lead on this and let me show you how to create what we call walk away wealth, where you make more money when you're asleep than you do when you're awoke, when you're awakened. So as it happened, Professor Kaba has created an additional five figure income for himself. He no longer has to use his retirement money to pay his bills. We just talked last night. I meet with him on Tuesdays and Thursday nights. And he said, one, I've never made this amount of money before. My son uh, came in and told me that uh, when I had a tooth, I had a toothache and I, I, I was laid out uh, in the bed. He came in. He said, Dad, you just made X amount of dollars. And he says, that's when it clicked for him that I am making money while I'm sleeping. I'm making whether I'm sick, whether I'm incapacitated, whether I'm asleep. I create a lavish income and lifestyle for myself. And Philippe, this needs to be learned by the community because this is our salvation. We need and that's why I decided to become a minister, because I looked at, OK, I know how to take somebody and create uh, digital uh, wealth. But the other part was their trauma got in the way of them being able to see it and to uh, sequence it. There's a concept in ancient Africa called Tep Heseb. Tep Heseb stands for accurately reckoning by using uh, accurately learning by using the correct method. It's the African scientific method methodology of how we reverse engineer and how we create and manifest our reality. And shout out to Reggie Mabry, who told that to Professor Kaba. So I took Kaba and I showed him how to how to create digital income that became a spiritual process. So digital nomics is the tactical, practical aspect of how to create uh, generational uh, income and wealth, spiritual nomics and first frequency is how to break uh, that uh, generational poverty mindset, financial struggle, paycheck to paycheck mindset, and how to relieve ourselves of our trauma so that we won't self-sabotage ourselves when we have opportunities to do it uh, a safe and Maathian way. And so it's a, it's a total healing concept that is about self-preservation of the African and the African-American. It's the true level of ADOS, uh, if you will, that I'm trying to get out to the community to help the community understand, we got this, we can do this. I am living proof of it. Professor Kaba is living proof of it. So I wanted to take an elder, and if I can make it, if I can do that for an elder, imagine what I can do for our millennials. Uh, and so that's what digital nomics and spiritual nomics is. It's a, it's a complete spiritual and economic self uh, reparation system that allows a level of independence where you create your own FU income and you can truly then say F the, fa uh, uh, the plantation, F the second frequency I move, F whoever wins or loses an election because it doesn't matter. My money is going to be right. My lifestyle is going to be right regardless because I'm no longer participating in these lower these lower frequencies. Well, my brother. So how can people um, get more information about digital nomics, your ministry, you know, everything that you build on? Sure. Well, the links, uh, if you're, I, I, I think you post to YouTube and to Facebook. So if you're on YouTube, of course, open up to show more. There are all the links in there. And there's some special links that Lord Jamar has uh, that, that when you click on them and, and you go through the process, uh, you'll be able to show some love to Lord Jamar. Uh, because what I want to teach my community is the process of affiliate marketing and how to make money without with other people's products and services and intellectual property please let's talk up. about that you, well see the, the thing that we don't even know i got some links on the screen right now not to cut you off but i got some links on the screen lessons in shock webinar one.com and also digital nomics free webinar.com yeah those are the two that's just, you know, the lessons in shock webinar that's the first uh, sermon less, lesson sermon that i've done that will teach you ancestral memory genetic traumas what happened to us. It will teach you the concept and the law of entanglement. 
uh, and how we're mm. entangled with the memory of the Amu. A lot of the uh, so that's not I, you're not talking about um, August Alcina and um, no, 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 no. Oh, okay, okay, no, 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 just, okay, okay. No, I'm not talking about that. Okay, all right, all right, all right. No, 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 that's a different type of it. That's a I'm just, show. I'm just making sure. I'm just making sure. Yeah, they're all shot. Okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. All right, I'm talking about how do we get entangled with their memories because a lot of the nightmares and traumas and things that we are having are not even ours, it's theirs and because we're entangled. So I'm gonna to talk to you and teach you the scientific understanding of quantum entanglement and how that manifests in the world. So that's what the first one does. And it gives you the understanding of first frequency and second frequency and so on. And digital economics free webinar, that's the webinar that I did with Professor Kaba Hiawatha Kamene and goddess Imuna Yezreel to talk about the impact of this work and affiliate marketing and what how to take your what you're already doing like some all of you are out there right now you're posting you're commenting you're on facebook you're sharing stuff why not get paid for it and so there's a level of 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 uh, in terms of affiliate marketing where every time you post something you're getting a check and you don't have to go anywhere you just do it on your phone and people don't our people don't know that we're the number one consumers and users on facebook a lot of people don't know that. And we, we make up, if if Africans and African-Americans left Facebook, Facebook would go bankrupt because we're the number one consumers, but we're not making any money. We're giving it away. And so I want to teach the people how to make money with what is already in front of them. And if you have some type of proclivity to maybe write a book or to do a book or do poetry or to, or to do recipes or something, I can take you and show you how to take your intellectual property and, and to make money from that as well and how to get to tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people uh, around the world to be able to, to do that, to create a self wealth and a walk away wealth. So those that's how people can get in contact with me is those two links and the links that are in uh, the YouTube, uh, if you're on YouTube and if you're, I think you're on Facebook, the links are above. Well, yo, brother, <clears throat> I thank you for coming on, blessing us with this information. You're Thanks definitely so a friend to the so show. Much. I'm sure we'll have you back, you know, again, as you've had me multiple times on your show. No um, doubt. Yeah. And shout out to, uh, shout out to, uh, uh, Godfrey and Rod Digger. I love, 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 uh, uh particularly Rod Digger because of hip hop. Uh, but shout out to your to the to the true God cast and the crew. Love me some Godfrey. Uh, uh, that dude when he did Steve Harvey, man, that was all. <laughs> that was my dude at that point. You know, I was rocking with him before that, but when he did Steve Harvey, I said, "Okay, Godfrey, I'm bowing down to the God." There's a reason why God is the first name of your of of of, of your word. You know, uh -huh. it's like your God and you're free. Let's go. Exactly. Come on. Exactly. That's with what it. I said. The God, the free God. The free God. Yeah. <laughs> and Lord Jamar, man, again, on uh, uh, thank you so sincerely for not just having me on your platform, but what your platform represents and what state. See, only a God could say F you to VL uh, to, 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 to VL TV. Only, mm -hmm. uh, you know, you know who I'm talking about. Only mm -hmm. a God could do what you just did. That's somebody who knows who they are. That's someone who knows that that this white boy doesn't run me. I run you. Matter of fact, I made your platform. Only a God would know that. Only a God would do that. So I'm when you did that, dude, I was I was I stood up. I was like, you know, how you stand, I have to tell, stand up and testify in church. I was mm -hmm. like, yes, I was. It was the most amazing thing because that's black solidarity. That's first frequency. That's African. That is what it means to be a, 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 a five percenter in terms of thought and how you move in the world. So I commend you, brother, for the platform that you have built uh, and the information that you are disseminating to the community is truth. So I really, really thank you very much for the opportunity, my brother. And I thank all of you out there. Uh, obviously, I can't see you or see the comments or anything, but know that you are loved. Know that you are in first frequency. Know that no matter what happens to you, has happened to you or will happen to you don't let up don't let don't give up and don't shut up until the creator takes you up hotep community uncle job Saneb. 
Yeah, my brother. Ladies and gentlemen, our brother, Reverend Philippe Shock Matthews. Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Peace. Hotel. Hotel. All right, my people. Another fire. Fire one. The mic was right. Because the man was right. <laughs> yeah, I know y'all enjoyed that one right there. Give some thumbs up right now. Give some, give your B1s and all of that right now. If you'd like to uh, further your education on um, what our brother was speaking on, go to the description in the uh yeah go to the links in the description and we have multiple links there where we're uh we're practicing digital nomics with each other because if you sign up and happen to pay for a class well guess what i get a little cut of that this is something we should do for each other every day Come on, affiliate marketing. We could be affiliates to each other. Help each other get paid and get paid at the same time. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that? Okay. You're getting kicked. Yep, block user. Where's all my uh, mods at? Did my mods break out? Because these motherfuckers, yeah, that goes on my B1s in the house. I'll be seeing a couple of cock bags here and there, you know. Trying to talk shit. I'm like, who the fuck let these motherfuckers on here? Get the fuck out of here. You know this is for us. They got these crisis posters coming in here trying to hate on us. Oh, no. We know who you are. You will be banished from the channel, bitch. Bitch. Yeah, that was a great one. That was a great one right there. I hope y'all hit my brother up. Hope y'all check out the happy film. Because that's about Economics as well. Economics is key, people. Let's uh let's see if the people who you voted for, if they got an economic plan for you that they're gonna follow through with. If y'all gonna wait around for that or are you gonna create your own your own economic plan? Some shit you can do right from home. Huh? Huh? Just saying. You need to get it done. Well, listen, I appreciate everybody for coming through. Make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe to the channel. What we at? Like 127,000. Let's go for that 130. Let's get that 130, I don't know, by next week. Some shit like that. Maybe if faster, I'd love it. But I want to see 130, then on to 150. Okay. That's how we moving. Make sure you hit the um, the notification bell and click all. Some people say, yo, I clicked all and I'm still not getting the notifications. I don't know what that's about. I don't know if they hating because of the type of information that we disseminate on this um, channel. And if that's the case, it's to be expected. You know what I mean? We're going to get our own fucking YouTube in a minute anyway. One of y'all motherfucking geniuses is going to come up with that shit. You're going to hit me up. Matter of fact, I think there's some shit called Black Enough that, that our brother uh, Boyce Watkins is down with. Maybe we'll go over there. I don't know. 
But for right now, we here, just like we here in America, dealing with these motherfuckers, um, maneuvering how we can amongst these mentally ill people. So yeah, I appreciate y'all coming through. Um, enjoy the rest of the day, the evening, and uh, we're gonna see what what happens with this whole, you know, this whole chicanery that they got going on right now that they got everybody following. All right, only fans. You know what? <laughs> I'm thinking about doing OnlyFans, actually. That's an idea I have. What do y'all think? Okay, I do OnlyFans, right? We do the, the interviews on OnlyFans, right? And then I just leave them up there because that's for the people that's paying for the description, for the subscription. Now, you you people on YouTube won't get the free live anymore. You'll get the the chop ups and all that but at the same time you won't be complaining oh where's the whole because you won't even know that the whole unless you was a subscriber you see what i'm saying so i'm thinking about doing some shit like that putting these lives on only fans you can subscribe and then that way you could just watch the shit whenever the fuck you want and if you don't subscribe well then you get them in pieces and then you'll get the full uh episode at the end what y'all think about that I think that that's uh that's an idea right there. I think that'll satisfy a lot of people who say, "Oh, I don't like it chopped up." Da da da. Okay, we'll then get you a subscription, and you could watch the shit all day and all night, many times as you want, and it'll cut down on these people trying to uh, pirate my um, pirate my uh, my content. Something that's been coming with being popular recently is people feel like they have the right to just upload my 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 uh episodes on their channel. Oh no motherfucker, you're going to get a copyright strike. I don't give a fuck. You can call it snitching. I don't give a wolf what you call it. Motherfucker, you getting a strike. We not we not crimeies together. We not working together. You didn't ask me to put that up there. Maybe if you asked me, maybe I would. Because some person actually did ask if they could have used the audio. I said, no problem. No problem. But if you think you're just going to be hijacking my um my videos and trying to get your views off it, oh, no, sir. Oh, no, sir. Oh, no, ma'am. He said, I love Jamal, not yet. When you hit 500,000 subs, that's when I should do the OnlyFans? You think so? I don't know. We'll see. But, but I appreciate your uh, input. I'm going to talk it over with my consultants. And, uh, yeah. We'll see what's up. But listen. I'm going to get out of here. This is my, This is my new temporary mic. I actually just uh, ordered a, a brand new mic, but it won't be here till tomorrow. So um, this is my in in between time mic because it was this mic that I was using before, and I think this mic itself has like a short in it or some shit like that. This is probably why it was on the side somewhere. Uh, <laughs> in my in my uh in my booth and shit like that and i just pulled it out thinking that oh maybe this shit works but yeah this is probably why i wasn't fucking with it in the first place so my audio's back on fleek and um yeah my mic sound nice check one shout out to truly zambian try shout out to uh american negro Shout out to Reality914, my mods. Thank y'all. Appreciate y'all. Um, but yeah, I got the uh like the $400 Sony mic coming. See, we're not just taking your your um your donations and just putting it in our pocket. We put it right back into the show, people. Okay. 
we put it right back into the show. It's visible. You gonna see. But anyway, thank y'all. Appreciate y'all. And um up, oh, see now who's this queen's finest? Get this bastard out of here. Bye. Okay. Yeah. Appreciate y'all. And we will be back. Oh, 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 oh. Hang on a second. Tomorrow. Our brother. Yes, uh, tomorrow we schedule tomorrow night at nine. We schedule to have our brother, Amir, Junaid Muhadith, born Chauncey Lamont Hawkins. You might know him better as Loon. That's right, Loon, ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow night. On the God cast. I don't let the cat out the bag. I held it long enough. Yes, Loon will be with us. Brother Amir will be with us. We will be talking about his journey and what he got going on right about now. What he wants to what he wants the people to know. Ran up to him in Harlem. Brother looking strong. Boom. We about to get it. All right. So join us tomorrow night. Our guest, Brother Amir, a.k.a. Loon, will be with us on the Godcast. Till then, I appreciate y'all. Once again, for the Godcast, I am Lord Jamar. For Rod Digger, my brother Godfrey. Peace. <laughs>